Thank you. My question is for the panel. We've seen some pretty egregious behaviour in the PwC tax scandal from greedy partners. This is another example of erosion of trust of a company who seems to only be sorry because they got caught. What controls will be put into place to ensure consultants who have engaged in this kind of behaviour are permanently banned from providing services to the government via the National Anti-Corruption Commission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. Look, I 100% agree and thank you. I think the National Anti-Corruption is the perfect place to put this in to be tried out because that should never have happened. Um, we rely on these organisations to do all the hard lifting where public servants used to do it many moons ago. And uh, previous governments actually axed a lot of jobs and have paid out millions and billions of dollars to these kind of agencies rather than giving all you guys that want to be in the public service, it can be OK. So you believe this, this should go it, to the NAC? It NAW should go to the NAC. And if we need to tweet the legislation so as it can, yeah, I'd have a look at that. David, David what, where yeah. the question of, of laws broken here? Do you believe that that's something that should be looked at? It's pretty horrendous what's yeah. happened. I mean, if someone, if someone did this to any one of us, we would never do business with that person again. I certainly wouldn't. And I think this warrants real investigation. You're mm. currently... We are prosecuting Richard Boyle for blowing the whistle mm. at the ATO. <laughs> we're prosecuting him for doing that. And yet we're seeing this sort of behaviour where we're paying people, and that's not enough. They're not, they're not happy to take the $1.4 billion we spend a year on the big four. They then use that to make even more money. Yeah. It, it's Insider trading. So, so is this as a result of increasing reliance on consultancies. One of the thing that, things that uh, the previous government boasted about was cutting the size of the public service, outsourcing a lot of things, um, paying, uh, g going into big contracts with companies like this. Is this the inevitability of, of that? Uh, no, look, I don't think so. I think, you know... I, but um, if it was in the public service, you would be able to keep a closer eye on it. Now, if you're outsourcing this, if these are the contracts that are being written, isn't this the risk? To be fair, in my experience, recourse to outside advice is rare, but useful when you pursue it. Meaning you need to robustly test what it is you've got from front of you. You need to get outside advice. Sometimes some of these bigger firms have got international networks and can tell you what's happening elsewhere around the world in a way that the Australian Public Service may not always be able to do. So you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm mindful there's an investigation on foot in the Senate is rigorously uh, examining what has happened. But you do want to recognise that the private sector should robustly test, should look at what we're doing, work out if it's the most efficient and effective way, or if there are other ways that are being pursued around the world that should be uh, looked at as well. No. Why are you shaking your head, Michelle? No. Um, so we have ended up in a situation, we've come to government and we've discovered that there is a public service and then there is a shadow public service, an over-reliance on external contractors in this country. Now, Katie Gallagher, the Minister for Finance, actually released a audit report last week, and wait for it, she found out that we have been spending 20... The previous government, in their last year, their last year, 2020-21, spent $21 billion, hmm. $21 billion on external contractors and external providers. The problem with this so scenario... So are you going to wind this back? Are you saying to we, PwC we, we now are you're going to wind this and back. you're going to look at the specific contracts? We are contracts. going to wind this back and we specific already have Specific contracts. Made, yeah, we're, we're already... We're taking people off this rolling labour hire, this casualised, mm. insecure workforce, and we're giving them permanent jobs. But the issue here is that people in the shadow public service are not bound by the Public Services Act. And so this exchange of information is somewhat fluid. Standards are somewhat blurred. And as a result, you don't get the kind of probity overlay um, that we've been. So, what are you saying to PwC? About? What's the message here? Are you saying you're looking at those contracts? PwC are, um, you know, that was an egregious breach of trust. And uh, so, the contracts that you have, the government mm -hmm. has. What are you doing with those? They're, so, so the treasurer Jim Chalmers has announced that he wants to see a tightening up of the taxation practitioners board immediately. Um, but, you know, there'll be an ongoing investigation now into this and we are looking closely at how we can tighten up processes. But Tammy mentioned the NAC. The NAC, mm. you know, is an important um, jurisdictional body that will have all the, the powers of a standing So this Royal should Commission. go to that? I'm not... No, I won't even entertain saying something like that because the NAC is chaired by independent commissioners and they are the ones who decide on what comes forward. This, it's not, this, up, this to, it's not up to politicians to say are, that. Are you, are you happy with that answer, if Michelle won't uh, commit to that? 
I think there'll be more discussions about this, but I believe the public service should have more people back into it and that they should go to the NAC. And if they need a, a letter of support, I'm, I'll definitely give them one of them. Isn't part of the problem that the big four accounting firms, including PwC, have donated, I think, over $4.2 million to the major parties over the last 10 years? And, like, we have a situation where these accounting firms can donate to the major parties of government and then have received billions of dollars in contracts every year. So like, that is a fundamental you, problem. I, well, I, my point is that the, those donations should be banned. That no, no body or corporation... <laughs> who has a, no body or corporation who has a direct financial interest in the decisions of government like that, where they are literally bidding for contracts, shouldn't be able to turn around and donate millions of dollars to the parties who ultimately make that decision. Don't I think unions that's pretty have an line. interest, a financial interest in what government does as well? Well, they're not bidding directly for contracts with the government. Like, we've got a situation here... They're bidding where for outcomes. Well, in this case, the PwC was bidding... Uh, uh, donated to uh, both the Labor and Liberal Party at the same time as they were giving advice on the one hand to corporations about how to dodge taxes and then advice to the government on how to close tax loopholes and they were providing, uh, clearly, it, it, it alleged, secret information between the two. I think that that body should not be able to mm. donate yeah. to a major we're, we're beefing party. up the, the public service and we're hoping yeah. that young Australians will see this as a destination of choice and a career of choice. I mean, we're here serving our country in these roles. You can also serve your country in the Australian public okay. service. Okay.